At this point, you've probably heard of Jared from Subway.eth. And well, if you haven't, well, he's just somebody or some group of people who have been successfully extracting tens of millions of dollars of value from thousands and thousands of people across the Ethereum ecosystem. And how is this group of people or this individual doing this? Well, this is all from something called a sandwich attack. If you don't know what a sandwich attack is, and maybe you can't wrap your head around how this individual or this, this group of individuals are successfully essentially stealing tens of millions of dollars of value, then of course this video is for you. And so today we're going to cover everything there is to know about these sandwich attacks. We're gonna understand how exactly they come about, how users are able to protect themselves from it. And we're even gonna look at an example of a live sandwich attack happening. And then we're going to look at an example of what a good sandwich attack related finding looks like in a real smart contract system. And I'm gonna give you a framework for uncovering findings and security vulnerabilities related to sandwich attacks. But of course, before we begin, my name is Owen and over a year and a half ago, I co-founded Guardian Audits. And ever since then, our team has uncovered dozens upon dozens upon dozens of critical and high vulnerabilities. And I've personally spent a few thousand hours auditing smart contracts. And my goal with all of these videos that I make, and especially this one, is to distill down everything that I've learned along the way and give it to you so that you can ultimately become a much, much better blockchain engineer or security researcher in a fraction of the time. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into the sandwich attack. So the first piece of context that will be useful for us going into this sandwich attack is understanding how front running works. And so if you're not exactly familiar with what front running is or exactly how it works, then you can go ahead and check out my last video, which goes in depth on what exactly front running is, why it's possible and why it can benefit attackers in some situations. And so essentially sandwich attacks are a special case of front running where it's particularly financially beneficial for the attacker to be able to, to front run a transaction. Well, why is that, you might ask? So first to understand this, we'll start off by drawing a simple price curve from an AMM. So here we have something resembling an X times Y equals K curve. And of course, if you're not familiar with this formula or this AMM curve in general, then you can go ahead and check out my video on the complete guide to AMMs and the, the Uniswap V2 constant product model, which is this X times Y equals K formula. You can check that out uh, in the description below. So if you have a little bit of context on AMMs, we'll go ahead and just give some, some basic high level overview. We have token zero on the X axis here and we have token one on the y axis and essentially as we're if we're if the price is all the way over here that means there are a lot of token zero there's a huge supply of token zero this is the amount of the supplies this this x value of token zero and there's there's not a lot of token y there's not a lot of token one which is the y axis right here right however if price just happens to be over here on the curve then of course well we've got a big y-axis value we've got a lot of supply of token one and not a lot of supply of token zero and so of course in this example where we're over here we have a huge supply of token one not a very big supply of token zero obviously that means that the price of token one relative to token zero should be relatively low so token one should be cheap as it's an abundant supply token zero should be you know rare precious so the price of it in terms of token one something that is not rare is very high and so if we're talking about the price of token zero in the context of this curve here stuff that is more to the left so as we as we move more along here and we go more to, more up into the left on this curve this is a higher price for token zero 
So the price for token zero goes up as we go to the left. Now, how does all of this build into what a sandwich attack is? Well, we have to look at exactly what you're doing when you swap on this supply and price curve. So let's say that I wanna swap X amount, let's say, well, let's put an actual number to it just to, to not get X confused with uh, this formula here. Let's say I wanna swap in 100 token one, and I wanna swap that for some amount of token zero. So I wanna swap my 100 token one, I wanna turn that into token zero. So what I'm going to be doing, if we say, let's say that the current pool price sits on this curve at this particular point, what we're saying is, so we've got this amount of token zero, this is the supply of token zero here, is this X value of this point, and then we have a supply of token Y right here, and that is the Y value of this point here. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding 100 token one, I'm giving that to the pool, and then I'm taking out token zero. So what would happen is I am increasing this Y axis value, right? So I'm, I'm coming in and I'm adding more, I'm making this Y axis value go up because I'm providing more of this token one, we're increasing the Y axis value. So what happens is this increases, and as this increases, the X value decreases by a corresponding amount. So the net result, if I just come and get rid of this here, the net result is that we move this dot, the dot which represents the actual price for the, the, the token, token zero that I'm buying here, and consequently also the token one in this exchange rate moves up here. So we just moved up and to the left on our price curve. So the price of token zero just went up, right? So I removed token zero from the supply. The supply of token zero here is smaller and I added token one. The Y axis supply here is greater. So I directly took price from where it was right there and moved it up to where it is now. So now maybe you're starting to see how this might be able to be manipulated if somebody can front run your swap. So let's ask ourselves, what would happen if I say, I wanna swap at this price here. Let's say this is, uh, let's just call this P0. Let's say this is P0 here. This is the price that I am willing to swap at. This is what I wanna swap at. But somebody else comes and before my swap gets executed, Right? It's sitting in the mempool. This is what we talked about in the previous front running video. My transaction could be sitting in the mempool waiting to get recorded in a block. And then somebody else can come and they can do this swap right before me and they move price up here. So now instead of price being at P0, when my swap starts to get executed, now price is at P1. And so that is immediately bad for me because I thought, well, I thought I was gonna get executed at price zero, but now I have to buy this at a higher price, which means that I'm going to have to put more token one in to get the same token zero amount out, right? Because the price is higher. And my swap will subsequently move the price even higher after that. So after I'm done swapping now, now price will be up here. It will be at this P3, value right here. And so somebody got in right before me, they're able to get in at this P0. That's when they were able to buy the price at which they were able to buy. And then I bought at price P1, and I pushed price up even higher to P3. And now, well, this person who bought all the way down at P0, well, they experienced some profit right away because not only did, uh, did I just raise up the price, but they've, just, they've still got their cost basis at P0. So what this person can do now is they can just sell their tokens immediately and just realize that little delta of profit. So now when they sell their tokens, they're gonna bring price back down to some value, it might be slightly above or slightly below wherever price was when I initially bought, depending on how much amount they bought at price zero 
and how much amount I ended up sw swapping. But essentially what was able to happen here is instead of me just getting my execution where I wanted it to at the original price, somebody forced me to buy at this price and push price up even higher. And then they were able to extract value from that by immediately selling the tokens that they bought right before me at a little bit lower price and experience that basically risk-free arbitrage, risk-free delta profit. And so the key here is really just the fact that when a person swaps one token for another, they move the price. If I can get directly before your swap, then I can have a lower cost basis and just wait for you to move the price even further and then sell at that higher price. And then that is the crux of this vulnerability. So you might be asking yourself, well, how do you even protect from this? How, how are we even able to swap on chain without just completely, you know, just front running each other and, and having, you know, a ton of value extraction just happen in every swap. So what I'm able to do to protect myself is I'm able to say, okay, well, I'm looking, I haven't set my transaction yet. This is what the price is right now. It's at this, this P sub zero, we'll call it. And I'm looking to make a swap at P zero. But of course, if somebody completely front runs me and moves the price up to something much higher, then I'm, that's a bad deal for me, right? They're going to be extracting a ton of value from my swap. So I can say, well, look, here's the, the percentage of slippage that I'm willing to accept, right? I'm willing to go, you know, maybe like 1%. Maybe I'll allow you to go 1% higher than this P0 price. So this would be, for example, 1.01 .01 times P0. That's what this price would be. So you just move, say, okay, price is currently at P0. If somebody were to come and extract uh, the maximum of that value that I'm allowing them to extract, I'll let them push the price up to 1.01 .01 times wherever the current price is. So that's the slippage that I'm willing to accept. And now as your transaction is sitting in the mempool waiting to get recorded, if somebody were to try to man maliciously front run you and cause you to have to buy at some crazy price that's that's way up here or something like that, it's gonna completely just revert and the swap is not gonna go through because we are invalidating this 1% margin for slippage. And of course you still do wanna have somewhat of a margin because otherwise if literally anybody does even a minuscule swap, then your swap is just not gonna be able to go through. So what do some findings related to sandwich attacks and, and slippage protection look like in real smart contracts? Well, I've got a finding here pulled up from a Guardian Defender contest. This is from Team 3, which was actually just a solo team of Chinmay. Chinmay compiled a, a fantastic report here. Recommend that you go and give him a follow on Twitter as uh, he often puts out some, some great Web3 security related content but he's got a, a great high finding here, which has to do with the slippage tolerance being extremely high. So we can go ahead and look at, let, let's first, we'll read the description, then we'll have a look at the actual code. So let's see, it says, when, in, when using a router to swap tokens, slippage tolerance provides a protection mechanism in case of flash moves in the market values. It is the user's responsibility to give a minimum amount of tokens he is ready to accept. In this protocol, the min amount has been hard-coded as one, which means 99% plus slippage allowed in case of large amounts. So the user is you know, usually supposed to determine, you know, this is the minimum amount of tokens I'm willing to accept out of this swap as a result of this swap. And that's really where we're defining are you know percentage of whatever the the current price is and so this finding is basically saying that uh, the configured slippage in the contracts that we'll see in just a second is essentially 99 percent plus so what that's saying is somebody can come in and move the price all the way up here and, and beyond and you'll still make the swap which means t a ton of value just got extracted from that swap and they're going to be able to steal a lot of value from your swap and you're going to end up getting pretty much for the most part wrecked. 
and this is exactly what Shinmei say, says here, this will make a user lose most of their dividend funds in this particular finding when the pool is imbalanced. And then of course the recommendation is to provide slippage tolerance as a parameter instead of forcing the, you know, having basically a terrible, terrible 90, 99% plus slippage margin. So we'll have a look here. And we basically, so we just have very simple, just a function swap tokens for ETH and we have the, the actual path and then we will we'll do an approval and then we'll do the actual swap. And the swap will basically have just any amount of ETH. And this is the, the minimum output amount parameter here. And we're configured just one way of ether, which is essentially is essentially for all intents and purposes, zero. So essentially you're saying I'll take even basically zero amount out of this swap, which means effectively there is no slippage protection, which means exactly like Chen Mei said, uh, basically all the value of this swap could be extracted. All right, so now we understand what a sandwich attack is. We understand how to protect against it with slippage protection. We see, you know, what a common finding related to sandwich attacks looks like, but how can we have a framework for uncovering similar attacks like this? And, and what do we need to think about when it comes to sandwich attacks to smart contracts? Well, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, are we auditing or building something that interacts with an AMM and does a swap, right? So if you have something that does a swap on Uni V3 or any other AMM, then you need to be thinking about slippage protection. Now, looking at every single swap call, you should inspect the minimum output amount, whatever the particular slippage configuration is, and make sure that it's able to be configurable and, and something reasonable. Anything above, you know, maybe a, a hundred plus Basis points is probably a little bit too much leeway. Of course, it depends on the amount that's being swapped, but that will be protocol specific. But there should be some way to set appropriate slippage controls during a swap. And on the other side, if you happen to be auditing an AMM itself, then of course you need to think, well, we need to expose appropriate slippage controls to the user, All right? So if a protocol happens to not have slippage controls or maybe the slippage controls are not sophisticated enough, then those should be implemented. All right, now that is everything you need to know to get a really strong grasp of sandwich attacks. And last but not least, let's go ahead and let's have a look at the famous Jared from Subway. We've got his address pulled up here on Etherscan and let's see how he's actually doing these sandwich attacks to uncover and, and extract value from transactions and other folks doing swaps. So we can see, first of all, tons and tons and tons of transactions just happening all the time. We can see even in the past three minutes, this this whole page of transactions is, is filled up here. So we're gonna have a look at two of these transactions that are back to back right here. And they're both from the exact same timestamp from 55 seconds ago. So let's have a look at the first transaction here. We can see there's a few things going on here with some more bespoke tokens and also interacting with wrapped ether. We can see that around 633, what is that, billion of this network spirituality was swap and then they received you know some amount of wrapped ether and then jared from subway sends in around what is this 85 five, nine, six, seven, three, oh. so around 85 million of this this trinity token here and uniswap sends back uh, 1.2 to nine wrapped ETH or something like this. And this is the first transaction here in the sandwich. And then we're gonna see, so somebody came in in the middle and they have moved prices. And now we're gonna have a look at exactly how Jared from Subway profited on the subsequent transaction. So in the subsequent transaction here, we could see that Jared from Subway sent in, well, it looks like four, seven, 37 wrapped ether and received back this time 
634 billion network spirituality. And so if we compare that back to this swap that happened here from what happened, he put in 633, 633 billion for this 0.49 amount of wrapped ether. Now he put 0.47 and received 634. So this was a pretty decent uh, amount of slippage that Jared from Subway was able to extract between this, you know, whatever this network spirituality token is. He essentially went from putting in 0.49 or putting in 633 billion of this token and then receiving 0.49 and then only putting in 0.47 and, and receiving 634 billion. And we can see a similar thing happened with this, this Trinity token as well. We can say that uh, in was 85,596,000 and then out was 85,603,000. And we can see that also 1.229 was the out and 1.22 was the input. So essentially we can see for both the network spirituality and the Trinity token here, Jared from Subway was able to extract value from some swapper who happened to swap in between. And in the original transaction, he basically took this uh, network spirituality and, and this uh, Trinity, turned it into wrapped ether. And then on the, uh, the subsequent transaction after, so the, the top slice of the sandwich, he took that that wrapped ether and he even didn't even need all of it. He just turned uh, a little bit less of that wrapped ether into more network spirituality and, and Trinity tokens. So basically ending up with more wrapped ether and more of these bespoke tokens than he had before. Of course, where did that value come from? It came from this person and whatever their slippage configuration was he extracted that delta of that value all right so that is absolutely everything you need to get a strong grasp on these sandwich stacks and even a framework you can use to uncover these types of exploits in any smart contract system and of course now you understand why you must always set your slippage when you're performing a swap all right i hope that this helped you out and of course if you happen to be a part of a team that is creating a really cool, new, innovative DeFi protocol, then of course I want to hear about your project. In fact, I want to hear about it so much that if you go to guardianaudits.com slash quote and you fill out your project information, I would love to go through and give you an initial list of security notes, things that ought to get fixed before going into a smart contract audit so that you can hopefully reach a higher quality of security much, much faster. And of course, if you happen to know anybody who is looking for a smart contract security review, then go ahead and send them to guardianaudits.com slash quote. And of course, if you are really interested in smart contract security, you want to connect with others from around the world who are looking to just talk about smart contract security or even potentially team up and compete in team audits of real protocols and get rewarded for your findings, then go ahead and apply to join our community of smart contract security researchers completely for free at lab.guardianaudits.com. All right, that is all for this time. I cannot wait until the next one.